Hello again to the Core 80, Episode 31. And uh, again, we're going to be on Picasso. This time I'm going to show you two Picasso paintings. I want to compare and contrast uh, two of his images. Again, for me, going through this series, I'm not really looking at... I'll spend a little time uh, delving into some of his composition work. Okay, Picasso, when he was a, a youngin, um, he did spend time, oh, hold on, let me do this. Um, he did spend uh, a lot of time because his, his dad taught him how to compose. And one of the things they say is that he would cut out, his dad taught him how to cut out things out of paper and, and align them on a grid. And that's kind of what we do at the academy as well. And so he was a grid master. He was um, he knew the geometry of of art making, which is absolutely key. And without it, uh, your art is just not going to have that museum quality feel to it. Um, you might be a great painter, but it's going to not feel like it's locked into the canvas. It's locked into the grid. I mean, uh, locked into the space that it contain that it's contained in. And the grids help you do that. They, come, they become like a, a calculator for you. They tell you the distance. They measure the distance and spacing on things for you. They give you uh, order and structure. They give you uh, harmony and unity because they give you a set of uh, lines to use. It, they limit the amount of lines that you can use. And so they give you a lot of, lot of important things that ultimately communicate the language of design. Now, with Picasso here, I want to really just focus on his design work in order to, uh, and his storytelling, okay? So, let me share this image with you here. And let me go back. So, what I want to do is contrast these two and show you the difference between storytelling of these two different stories and then the design elements that go in, not all of them, but just a couple of them, that go in to making this, this story happen, uh, each of these stories. And you can tell the energy of both of them are very, very different. And the thing is, is when you create a work of art, you want to be authentic about it. And the way that you become very authentic is you have to become very honest. You have to become very real with who you are and what you are and what you know and your experiences. And you have to become vulnerable. You have to put them out there. You have to be honest with yourself on those things uh, so that you can be honest with other people and then they can feel it. Um, and so here we're looking at a very sexual scene I, can, I think it's a rape scene. I could be wrong. It, it could just be really, really, really aggressive, rough sex. Um, I don't get that energy from it. I feel that there's a forcing. Um, this dude is forcing himself in and onto this woman. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why I believe that, uh, because of the way the image is designed, okay? And so let's take a look. I think there's only two slides on this one. I want you to look in terms of design. Oops. Let me see. I'm missing a slide here. How rude. Um, hmm. Give me one second here. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Hmm. Forgot to put it in. All right. It's not a problem. Let's go grab it real quick. There it is. All right. <clears throat> Save. Make sure that everything else is there. All right. Goody, goody, goody. So let's get back. Now let's share that screen again. 
Bam. Okay. So here is the, the drawing. And what I want you to focus on, first of all, at least this is how I see it. When I see an image like this, I look for uh, a couple things. I look for high points of contrast. Um, in this scene, her face pops, um, her breast pops, and his balls pop. It sounds really painful. <laughs> um, so the contrast, as you can see here, is testicles against that very are very dark, and they're they're against a very light background. Okay, um, basically they're on where the sun don't shine. Um, but in this image, he keeps the tone, uh, the dark marks down because he wants that whole area to be a high a highlight against that dark the darkness of the guy's testicles. Okay. Now, her face is light as well. And you can see that she's surrounded by all of this darkness, okay? And darkness meaning value. The, 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 it's a dark value. So there's a heavy, heavy contrast between uh, the guy and her. The breast is kind of poking out. You see it. Um, it's not as contrasty as the others. Um, Obviously, it's just a nipple, and that's just so that you, I guess, understand that this is a woman um, being being uh, uh, raped, okay? And again, I say rape because of the design, and I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, notice that his face, he has dark hair, he has uh, his, his complexion, and I'm not talking about his complexion in terms of, like, his race or anything like that. I just mean that... Um, He's in shadow, okay? He has a, a darker value to, his, to him than her face. Her face is a lighter value. His is a darker value. That could be because he's in shadow. That could be because um, uh, there's a lot more lying in his face to show, you know, his, um, his expression. Uh, but then as you pull away, to the right-hand side, it becomes much more lighter. The contrasts are lower, except for where the testicles are. So this is what we're looking at. At least this is what I see when I first see this. Now from here, I start looking at the line work, and what I begin to see is if we look down the, cur the center of his back, we have the, the, the curve here. And it comes down through his his uh, his butt, okay, and then it comes up through his cheek, basically where his penis would be uh, inserting, okay. Again, his far butt cheek here comes and again curves right into there, bringing your eye, thrusting your eye into her, okay. Her butt cheek down here, same thing. You see, it's just a repeating of that same energy creating what we call a thrust. And what's happening is it's bringing you down through and you end up looking at his balls, you know. And, and then to, on top of it, you have that high contrast. So you see, you see that. He's not trying to hide it. He's trying to make you see it, okay. The God said, uh, drawing isn't, isn't, I mean, art isn't drawing what you see. It's making, um, it's drawing what you want other people to see. It's making people see what you want them to see. And so he wants us to see the testicles. He wants us to feel this thrust, this pounding, this uh, insertion, okay? Now, once, once it's in, notice that on the other side of her, okay, right here is her, her leg, the, the 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 top part of her quad, the top part of that, that thigh, and that curves back up, back in here, okay? So now you have this big thrust from his back, from his butt to his balls, her butt, all coming in. And then once you're in this area where her breast is, you, there are these curves that are like pushing him up in and under, okay? So that is what it, this image is about now. That's pretty freaking brilliant, the way he's making us feel that, okay? It kind of makes me feel uncomfortable because, you know, 
he's basically illustrating a violent rape, okay? And he's using all of these lines and this aggressiveness in, in this image. Now, all of these lines, every line is a voice. It's, 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 um, it's energy, right? And so there's a lot of <clears throat> type of energy in this thing. There's aggression in this thing. And so now once we come over to his arm, you can see this amazing curve being repeated, you know, even like in the skeletal part of his arm here, this curve. And, and when I see that, I feel like he's locking her in. And then if you look at his hand down here and how that curves up through, he's like holding her down, holding, you know, he's on top of her. He's hunched over her. She can't go anywhere. She's trapped. This is why I think it's a rape, okay? Um, even, you can even see like there's another hand there where he's like locking her hand into there. Um, now, her arm is actually coming up in a thrust in an angle that's actually pushing, trying to push him off, okay? Now, if we come into her face, like come over to her face and we see the thrust that's being created here, and then it shoots up. So there's a strange angle, bam, bam. Like it's like almost like she got her arm out, and then she's trying to push his face away. Right now, he repeats that thrust, that diagonal coming up into his face. I mean, that arm actually extends up into the beard, the, the side of the beard. Uh, up and that that's repeated through the nose, so you really feel the push. It's just not oh, I'm pushing. No, I mean you're, you're really feeling it go through, um, up through the shoulders, the same angle. Bam! And you're going to come across when you hit that face. Now you're going to come up across the shoulders this way. So it's bam, bam. It's up and out. Okay. What happens is then when, when, when that energy goes up and out and your eye comes over to the right, now we bring that curve back in and, and he's still humping, okay? Uh, then we have this uh, cloth thing in the back coming down, which brings us right back into the image. It also mimics or, or comes close to mimicking the thrust out. So this is that in, out, depending on what part of the image you're looking at. And then as your eye comes back down, we get thrown back into, in, into this uh, direction, into this thrust, bam. And so it's a very you know, aggressive, dark piece. But the reason why I want to show it to you is because he is a master storyteller. He's telling this story. Now, I want you to see it because I want you to understand the other story that's involved here. And that is this story. See, what level of, uh, of sensitivity did Picasso have that he was able to capture, to understand the energy of something like this and then turn around and do something like this? This is called The Lovers. It's just peaceful. It's gentle. It's affectionate. It's love. He has her, he has his hand on her back, on her shoulder. He has his hand extended there where she's taking it. He's looking at her. She's hesitant. Her mind is saying, I want to go. Her body is saying, I'm uncertain. The lower part of her body is like, well, let's go. If you look at the, uh, the angle of her hip and the angle of the, his back leg, it's, it's a very similar thrust, right? It's moving you in that direction. He's vertical. <clears throat> he 
he's certain. He knows what he wants. She's a little hesitant. But then his shoulders are curved. So he's not being rigid in saying, do what I want, woman. He's being strong. He has a backbone. They're both wanting to move in the same direction. She's a little hesitant. But what he does is he becomes graceful. He curves around her. See the curve in his shoulder and how it comes over into her shoulder? That's beautiful. They're becoming one. Coming right back down to the hand, leading the hand. Now that shoulder, that hand on her, on her shoulder is guiding her. The hand is leading her. He's not forcing. He's not pushing quickly. He's, he's at a very slow pace. And how do we know the slow pace? Well, first of all, let's take a look at the curve here of that window and the, the, the blue behind and the, um, the pink curtain and how that comes into his shoulder. And if we take that same exact curve, same exact curve, and we repeat it, the, the, the face gets into alignment in there, the shirt, the same curve, and now all of a sudden the side of her face comes in there, the elbow, the hand, the, the curve of the arm into, the, into where their hands are, the curve of where the, where the light and the dark meet creates an edge and has a soft, a soft edge though, but it, it creates a, a curve that comes right up into his shoulders. Okay. But he's not forcing, he's not rushing her. He's not forcing her, but he is leading her. Okay. And you can see, this beautiful, gentle dissension of, of line, of value, of edges coming that's, that's, that's a little guidance, right? And then you have this interesting curving coming here through his shoulder, through her arm, through, through her thigh down here. And so I almost feel like this is what he's doing. He's leading her. And she's, she's coming and submitting. She's coming and submitting. I just think it's beautiful. Now, notice the pacing of these curves that are coming down and the ones that are coming down here. They're almost identical in, in the sense of their spacing. Look at the head. Boom. Boom, boom, the space between the face and the eye, the space between the eye and the, the head, the head, side of the head and the, and, the, and the arm. It's the same thing, front of the head, back of the arm, another space, boom. And what happens is your eye travels these distances without having too much information. Now, the places that have the most information – and, and by most information, I mean like the collection of, the, of little lines outside, down here in her, her thigh area there are. But the fingers are, right? They're just like little spaces. So if I was going to make a sound and I would go from the left-hand side to this, to the window, you know, that would be a space. I wouldn't hear anything. And then I would see the line. It would be a mark. So I could go dot. And then another space, dot. And then it would continue. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, and so by making that noise and that space, it's kind of, you know, translating in my eye what, what I see into a sound. So it would be silence, dot, 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 dot. Okay, now if I'm down in the hands, wherever there's a line, I make a sound. So it would be dot, 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 dot. Dot, dot, dot. You see the, the level of noise, the level of energy that's being created because the distances between each mark are, um, are, are shorter. So this is why this is, becomes very loud and very aggressive. <laughs> right? Because your eye is seeing a mark here. This is the energy. Now as it gets over here, 
it starts to fade out. So it's okay. And this is like your eye is picking up on these things, at least for me it is. And when I see a mark, I hear a sound. Where I see space, I hear a rest, which is nothing. It's just silence, okay? So these areas have a lot of energy because the, the, the lines are closer together. But these areas, it's so open. And so you just have this feeling of something moving gently through it. You have them moving, embracing, coming together. They're loving each other. He's not trying to force something onto her. He, he's leading her to that place. And, you know, when I look at this image, it reminds me of one of my favorite love stories. That's right. Oh, wait, you were going to say Romeo and Juliet, weren't you? Was that what you were thinking? No. That's an okay love story. But this image reminded me of the great Rocky and Adrian, who used to be my favorite love story. They still might be, but I think I have a new favorite one. But uh, I remember when I was a kid and watching Rocky, man, I fell in love with Adrian. That's probably why I love black-haired women so much uh, and the little nerdy ones too. <laughs> um, and... and uh, you know, I, when I saw this poster years ago, I just thought it was the coolest poster. All I wanted her to do was trust me, and she did. And that's what that image is all about, right? He's leading her. Trust me. She's a little hesitant, but she's going to go. That's it. I love this. I love this movie. I love this story. Um, Actually, strangely enough, um, when they filmed it, uh, I was in Philadelphia. I was a little kid. I, I think it was um, Rocky II I was around for. I'm not sure. I think Rocky I might have come out right when I was born or right before I was born. But this is where Rocky lived, and then, and then they got married in the movie, and that's where uh, Adrian and him went in uh, into, to live into his uh, apartment, his little, little apartment. But... Uh, my family lives right around the corner from this. This is this is where I grew up when I was a little boy in Philly. Like, you know, the streets that Rocky ran on, <clears throat> you know, they got the train there and little, I mean, all of that stuff. That was that was my hood. That was my neighborhood. <laughs> and um, it's probably part of the reason why I love Rocky so much because, you know, he was Philadelphia. I was from Philly. I mean, we're right in the same neighborhood. And, um, you know, I go to my aunt's houses and they, you know, some of them still live in houses like that. Um, and it was just very, very cool. And I remember, you know, wanting to get up and run around the block. And my father started training me in boxing at that time. And uh, it was all inspired by Rocky. And I've always, always um, had a little fantasy of meeting somebody who was like Adrian in that sense, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not there anymore, but when I was younger, uh, to meet somebody who was this powerful woman, but maybe because of her circumstances or whatever, or she didn't get the right encouragement, she was waiting for the right kind of man to kind of come into her life to help her blossom into that, you know, uh, because Adrian, in my opinion, is probably the strongest character in the whole Rocky series. Um, and by Rocky being strong, allowed her to be strong. And, um, but she, in my opinion, was the strongest of all the characters. And I, I always just loved their little story. This is my favorite part in the Rocky movie. This is uh, when they're in the ring, um, the ice ring, and they're skating, and he's talking about his little broken finger. And, you know, he says that uh, he wasn't very smart, you know, he had a body, and, and so he didn't need to, his brain. And his dad was telling him, you know, just grow up and be a fighter. You know, that's all you need to be, you know. You don't need to, you don't need to think about nothing. And, um, and she, she starts laughing because it was the very opposite for her. Her mother said, you ain't got a body, so develop your brain. So she started reading and that kind of stuff. And I, I just like the, the juxtaposition of the two characters, you know. And... Um, now, there's a new movie, well, it's not new anymore, but it's my favorite movie called Love Actually, and the story between Jamie and Aurelia, 
uh, the Portuguese girl, uh, happens to be probably my favorite love story out of all the movies I've ever seen. Rocky, probably second, sometimes comes back to first, but Rocky and Adrian, uh, Jamie and um, uh, Aurelia, I just absolutely love this little story with inside the bigger movie, which happens to be one of my favorite movies. And I watch it every Christmas season. So I've been doing it for, I don't know what, 10 years now or whatever. Just absolutely love this movie. And this is my favorite, um, my favorite little story in it. So anyways, that is, uh, we started with a rape scene and we ended with love. And, uh, and the reason why is because Picasso was a lover. You know, he understood it. He, he got it. And, um, you know, he had his little sordid stupidities and whatever, but he, he was a very profound man and an amazing storyteller. And he had the skills to back it up and to try to communicate these ideas. You know, you get these ideas and you've got to get them on paper. And you can really, really, I mean, really work through a lot of problems. I mean, personal problems, personal crap that you may be going through, you know. Um, that's the magic of working in as an artist. And, and when you can communicate those things, you know, it's, it's like somebody journaling, you know, go and take a journal, do a diary and get those thoughts out of you. Take that energy and push it through a language so that you can, you can, put it on, you know, in, into something. For us, it's visual. You know, we get to manage line and space and, and, and managing those things in such a way that it tells a story. And um, uh, for some people, it's music. Whatever it is, push. Don't waste it complaining. Don't waste. Um, yeah, I'll tell you a story uh, real quick. When I was younger, uh, I lived in this one foster home and the foster mom was a psycho <laughs> and, it, and, um, and she tried to punish me once by taking away drawing. Said, You're not allowed to draw no more. That's what she said. And I was like, are you an idiot? Like <laughs> you take that away from somebody, you know? And, uh, but it was one of the greatest things in my life because I wasn't allowed to draw. So I really had to expand myself. And so I remember sitting out, uh, I was maybe 13, 14 years old at the time. And, uh, and I was just outside all, I was pissed. I was so angry. And I didn't know what to do, you know. I was like, I want to break something. I want to punch a wall, I don't know, whatever, you know. And uh, and so what I ended up doing was spitting on the ground and taking a stick and making mud out of it. I'm like, I'm going to show this one. You don't tell me I can't draw. It's like telling me I can't breathe. What are you talking about? You know, Stop it. You're not allowed to breathe. So I, I spit on the ground. I take the stick and I make this big old mud slop and I take it and I start drawing with it. And then I take it and I'm drawing stuff in the dirt and making mud things. And, and I was like, you know what? It's who I am. It's what I do. It's how I communicate. And, and from that point, I, I, you know, it was a very profound moment in my life because I, I, I extended myself past the traditional medium and realized ultimately that, that, it, that drawing is a mind thing. <clears throat> a lot of times, I'll be looking at people or things or whatever, and I'm analyzing, calculating, drawing, designing, composing, trying to figure out how things work, you know? And then when I come and I sit down and I draw, I'm like, I, I surprise myself. So I'm like, dang, you know? I'm like, where did that come from? But I realize I'm building visual vocabulary all the time because I'm, draw, I'm constantly drawing all of the time in my head. And um, sometimes you'll, you'll, if I'm, I'll go like this, you know, because I'm drawing by my hand or I'm drawing with my finger in the air. I don't need to see the physical marks. I know what the energy, how, how that feels, and, you know, 
when the pressure comes through, there's an energy in my hands and I can feel it. And so I don't need to see the mark. I can feel, I can feel the lines. Um, when you get sensitive to that kind of stuff, I mean, you can look at people's work and almost know exactly what they were thinking, when they were thinking, and maybe even why they were thinking it. Um, it gets kind of freaky. You kind of become like a, a forensic, you know, scientist or like CSI or something, but with artwork, you know, you can, you, you see the psychology um, of in people's lines and, and in their marks. And so um, uh, all that to say is draw, 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 play music, dance, whatever it is that you need to do to uh, journal, uh, to, to express yourself. And if, if drawing is it, if music is it, take the time to learn that craft, to, to, to learn the science of that communication. So you can become extremely profound uh, in what you're articulating. So you have to be honest with yourself. You have to go in. And this is why I like Picasso so much because he didn't give a shit what nobody thought. He didn't care. And because he was free, he could be honest. He could be vulnerable. He could go in and talk about, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if he, if he knew people who were raped, if he raped somebody or if he was raped or he was just around that kind of energy. Um, or he just allowed his imagination to go there and be free enough to go there. Okay. Um, but then on the other hand, you look at the other drawing and it's this amazing affection, this gentleness, right? So I can see in the man that he was passion and yet he had a, a, another kind of passion too, which was a sensitivity to him, right? So he, he could be both. And this is what's amazing when you're drawing, you can, in designing, you can, experiment and go into these different energies because that's all it is is energy you know it's like oh, that's one energy and oh, there's another energy but you got to know how to tap into it. you got to know how to control it you have to know how to release it you got to know when to do it when not to do it right and uh and that's what we're practicing so on that note please share this video send it out to your friends Rewatch it i encourage you to keep looking at artwork and uh, until tomorrow, ciao.